You keep trying to change the effect without ever putting energy into the cause, you're going to continue to chase after different things. And after it's all said and done, nothing changes and you feel exhausted. You feel hopeless. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how unconscious beliefs are affecting your life today. And I'm going to be using this piece of plastic to show you. And ultimately this video, if you watch until the end is going to show you how to remove these blocks that are affecting your life. So let's get started. So a lot of people's understanding is that whatever happened to them in the past doesn't matter. It's not affecting them right now. But if you're trying to make a change in your life and you keep finding a pattern or a problem or an issue that no matter who it is, outside of you, if it's about love or it's about money, the dynamic continually plays. Well, the idea that our past doesn't affect us would mean that we basically are able to see the world clearly as exactly as it is and what happened in the past doesn't affect us. However, that's not how it works. So the illusion right now could be that you feel like you have your free will to make current life choices. But what actually is coming into your awareness, your conscious awareness, is being filtered through whatever unconscious and core beliefs that you have. And where do these core beliefs come from? They come massively from childhood, your environment growing up, what you believe to be true about yourself, what you perceived to be true about yourself, or what was actually told to you about you. So rather than seeing life as it is with that clear piece of plastic, you see through the beliefs that were created from when you were probably before you were six years old, because until then you're actually in alpha brainwave, meaning that you're a giant sponge. That is the frequency of your unconscious. So whatever happened growing up is important, not because it affects the rest of your life, but because I'm going to show you how to unhook from this, because unless you do that, you'll continually only see in your current reality, the ideas, the beliefs of what you hold to be true because they're getting filtered. You're only able to find in your environment what confirms the identity, your self-concept. There's all sorts of other circumstances that you could be connecting with when you understand how to cut the root cause and fuel of this belief. So let me give you a little bit better understanding of what that looks like in real life. Here we have this basically belief, which is at the core of this and how that's going to express in your life. So it, you could have a belief that you're not good enough, that it's what you do. So you'll find in life, people, circumstances, situations that basically you have to earn it. You have to work really, really hard situations that basically you just put it all out there and then maybe at the end you'll get a little crumb of validation but you'll continue to find this continue to find this until you change this belief because if you can see the root which we're going to get into later which is fueling this belief and I'm going to show you how to cut the cord but it's fueling this belief and this belief continues to be the filter that you see through or the lens that you see through. You don't see the world as it is. You see the world through this belief. Now, if this core belief is limiting, then you're going to find the limitations of yourself in your outside world. That is all an illusion. Now your current life circumstances could feel very, very real. A hundred percent, that's valid. Yes, there are, there are situations that cause you stress. There are people who let you down. There are people who are not emotionally available. Absolutely. But what you've got to start understanding is the reason you're connecting is because that's the filter you're seeing through. That's what you're finding. They're confirming that yes, you're not good enough, that nobody is emotionally there for you, right? So if you have a belief that everyone is going to abandon you or that you have to go out of your way and constantly check in with the other person, then you're going to find people who fit that dynamic. That means there are other people out in the world that you literally cannot perceive of your senses or you would actually might find them unattractive because they are in such a dissonance with your belief. So as you change your beliefs, you'll completely stop this expression of your life and then you can bring Neville Goddard in here that your level of consciousness, right? Another word you can use for belief is an assumption. So this literally is a different way to see and understand the law of assumption. Whatever you assume to be true about yourself, based on how you've been treated, based on what you were shown in your earliest dynamics, right? 
that is what you're going to see in life. That is going to be the expression. Your level of consciousness is going to be the circumstances you find outside yourself. Not because that's all there are, but because that's all you can see. Perceptional bias and schemas is a psychological or psychological terms of what is this is. Just earlier when I had the clear glass, that's not what you're seeing. You're seeing life through the limiting beliefs. So as you start to understand this, whatever's happening outside of you is not a representation of your whole worth. It's a representation of how you currently see yourself. That means when you remove this, this automatically can change. So now let's think about it. Okay, so if you grew up in an environment where you were not celebrated and told that you are worthy for who you are, it's not what you do, it's who you are. In all of us human beings, there is a vital part of our development where it's essential that we're told this. However, our caregivers doing the best they can are human beings. So a lot of us were not told that. So as a kid, we idolize or kind of godify, and is the word I use, our caregivers because we, our literal life depends on their approval, their validation, and the, their acceptance of us because they're literally keeping us alive. So when we start to relate our worth through who we need to be to them, we start to create beliefs that are not accurate about our true worth. Gabar Mate talks about this. If you're not told that it, you are worthy for who you are, you start to think, oh, it must be what I do. So I'm not worthy. Okay, so I have a belief that I am not worthy. It's what I do. And so as that fuels this, you're going to start seeing, oh yeah, there's going to be very cutthroat, competitive, uh, stressful situations where you've got to prove, you've got to earn your worth. And if you don't, you're going to be abandoned. You're going to be left, that no one's going to be around, want to be around you because at the end of the day, you're not worthy. So again, that's the belief, and this is fueling this life expression. And this is also really big because so many people want to affirm my life is good. I am worthy. I am whole and complete. And they're, they're looking at their life circumstances now. They're not affirming at the level that's necessary. So when you start to try to affirm at the expression rather than the belief, you're going to have a lot of wasted energy because this is just a secondary, this is a byproduct. Cause, this is the cause, this is the effect. So if you keep trying to change the effect without ever putting energy into the cause, you're gonna to continue to chase after different things and after it's all said and done, nothing changes and you feel exhausted, you feel hopeless and you look around in life and it's the same expression of what the belief was because to change this, you gotta deal with that. One more time, to change this, you gotta deal with this. Now, you have to understand that there's gonna be some pain bubbles in this, but the pain bubbles are actually already you're already feeling them, you're just unconscious to them, you're numb to them. So you gotta bring them, you gotta bring them up so you can feel them, so you can heal them, and you can basically rectify this belief. Now a big part, as you start to look in, okay, I grew up in an environment that emotionally uh, was too small for me. It was insufficient. I thought that the only way I could get connection or validation uh, to know that I was safe is if I got really good grades, if I got an award. So again, if that's what was going on, you've got to start looking here. What is the root of that belief? Oh, okay. In the situation where you believe you're not worthy, it's what you do. When I was growing up, my caregivers gave me validation and attention when I did something really good, when I got a big award or when I got straight A's. And if I didn't, I didn't get connection. I got isolation. So understanding with your adult mind, pulling this out of your unconscious and looking at it with your current adult mind. I have a belief that I don't feel like I'm worthy. Okay, why do I have that? What is fueling this? Oh yeah, when I was growing up, maybe a parent told you that you'll never make it unless you work really hard. You'll never be good enough unless you make half a million dollars. You're, you aren't worth anything unless you have a family and children, right? So this root experience keeps fueling this belief that you're not good enough 
unless X, Y, Z. Now remember, you inherently are always worthy. You've never been apart from it. Your illusion that you're apart from it is the only reason that you feel separate from it. Actually, the limitation in that was my caregiver, my parent, my grandmother, my teacher, their small world and understanding of true worth is what li was limited in that situation. So then you can actually cut that and no longer allow that belief to be fueled because you see this situation that's been fueling this belief in a totally different way. And you liberate yourself from that. You, with your adult mind, do that to help yourself. For my own life example, I had a huge abandonment wound, basically meaning that I felt like if I didn't do X, Y, Z, that people were going to leave me, that I was gonna be emotionally abandoned. Getting to the root of that was some experiences when I was a kid and something would happen and I thought it was something I did. I felt, and as kids, we're all very sensitive to different dynamics because we're constantly saying, are we safe, are we good, are we okay? So something would happen and the caregiver would kind of emotionally be more distant. And I thought, oh no, I've done something. I did something to cause them to go. Now I must do something to try to reconnect. So because I believed that that was about me and something I did wrong, I basically then found it everywhere in my life. So as I started to realize, oh, wait a second. Okay, I believe that it was something I did. Let me go back to those, those early on experiences. And you don't have to go to every single one. You're going to find big pockets of different beliefs and you don't have to get to the original. You only need to see yourself and shift your perspective of yourself in that memory with your adult mind, not going back and reliving it according to your first person experience, but starting to say, okay, oh, okay, the reason I believe this is because people would disconnect and I thought that was my fault. Oh my God, they had a lot of stuff on their plate and they were overwhelmed. I was emotionally insufficient. I didn't do anything bad to deserve that and I didn't need to earn connection and I didn't need to do anything. But I didn't know that at the time. But when I realized that as an adult, I thought, wow, that completely, as I realized that I snipped this cord, let's just cut that off, right? That could no longer fuel the belief that I had to work really hard in order to keep a relationship. So it completely changed the dynamic of how I saw myself and I was liberated and it created space instantly in myself to then say, oh, I've always been worthy. I'm whole and complete. Huh. And what I say is, whoopsie, didn't know that, now I do. You could have a belief that you're amazing and no one else can see that and you're fearful that you've got to be somebody else or check in with the other person to make sure that you're okay. What do they need you to do for them to like you, right? So you're, you're believing that it's not safe for you to be you or that no one will want to connect to you. Even though you think you're awesome, no one want to connect to you as yourself. So that's the belief, right? And then that's going to cause different life expression. But... And again, even if we affirm for this or we visualize to change this, we're not dealing with this. You've got to be on the same level of what is causing the effect. So, okay, wow, let me think about it. Hmm. Oh, when I expressed my true self as a little kid, my parents didn't really understand what I was doing. So they said, oh, don't do that. Oh, how could you say that? Why would you say that? Maybe they were uncomfortable with the unique expression that you have. And rather than seeing that, at the time, you didn't have the skills, so you thought, oh no, what I'm doing is bad. And if I keep doing this, I'm gonna be exiled. And if I'm exiled, I might die. So your literal survival depended on creating this coping mechanism to keep you safe. But with your adult mind now, you can say, huh, growing up, my parents were, weren't very accepting of those ideas. I thought that it was my ideas that were wrong, but really I'm seeing, oh, maybe my parents didn't have the emotional capacity or maybe it, it pushed on a button from their past and it made them feel uncomfortable. And rather than going and using their skills to, to go inside themselves and do this work, they just said, no, I'm wrong. Oh, it had nothing to do with me. That was not me at all, whoops. Let that go. So now you can start to see you're cutting the root that's fueling this belief. The more and more you do that, the less is what you'll be looking through that in your adult life. And you'll completely shift your perspective of yourself, which means then it, it, it's completely dismantling and a little bit disorienting because you're like, wow, all this time I thought it was me, 
but oh my God, that had nothing to do with me. And that doesn't mean you blame your caregivers, that just, you, you see them as human beings. Oh, wow, I always blame me. I thought I was the insufficient one. I thought I was the one at fault. I, I was always deserving. I, I was okay. That expression was actually good. And when I learned to re-reason on this, I can realize, wow, actually the way I stay safe now is when I'm authentic to myself, when I listen to that, because sending out that signal actually will now bring in the life expression, because this old belief is now gone. So this life expression will now be able to shift. And the more and more you do this with different core beliefs, the more and more you can align with your true essence, the worth and value you've always had, but you had a misunderstanding of yourself based on an early on experience that's been fueling this belief. And then you've been trying to use all your attention and all your resources up here, but this kept pushing through. But as you cut the root here, you'll be able to then just dismantle it. Just getting all this off the wall, just it's done. Understanding how to cut the roots that have been fueling your unconscious beliefs is so vital. This next video right here is gonna help you understand how to identify what those unconscious beliefs are so that you can use what you learned in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. I love y'all and I'll see you on the next one.